What's up, everybody? Thrall's Miller here once again. I'm the Croc Nick. I'm Jam and John. And we have yet another album review for you. Pretty much rounding out the uh, releases that we wanted to cover in terms of full-on reviews for the week of the 20th of January, we decided to go over something uh, pretty underground and pretty fucking raw and pretty fucking disgusting. So we are going to go over the debut full-length from Dryad, The Abyssal Plane. This also comes on the 20th of January on Prosthetic Records. Again, this is the debut album. They formed in 2017 in Iowa City, Iowa. And, all right, initially this was, at least in terms of what I saw, advertised as black and death metal. And going into it, it's definitely has elements of death metal, like kind of smaller elements. Yeah. Plenty of black metal, but also a fuck ton of just kind of DB cross punk. Like, this is pretty fucking filthy. It's pretty gross sounding, but not in the typical sense of like death metal gross sounding. This is more, they, they lean a lot on, on horrific atmosphere, very creepy, ambient. I, I can't even say dissonant. And I was hoping there'd be more dissonance here and there's not a whole lot of it. When it comes down to like the music itself, I mean, there's like a fair amount of dissonance in the riffs, but the riffs are like straightforward, like kind of like D beat crust riffs. I mean, there's plenty of D beats on here. After you get past the opening track, uh, Counter Illumination, which sounds like a long-winded word for darkness, it's like horror sense and clean guitars. It's a really kind of creepy, moody piece. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, what am I getting into? Like this almost sounds like the beginning of like a early 80s horror movie. That's what I wrote many times yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's a lot of that on here. And then when you get into the song Bottom Feeder, stomping drums, raw production, you hear this deep fucking roar immediately, and that is followed by these horrific reverb drenched screams that sound like two feral cats fighting in a sewer over something dead. They are fucking vicious sounding. And possibly too vicious in some spots because they like to layer those deep growls and the screams at the same time, and they kind of wash out like the mix of it. Well, there's so much reverb on them. Like I get it. I get it. Black metal. I mean, black I get metal. it. That's that's pretty much a standard trope for black metal. But they're so heavily layered that they oftentimes will drown out the music. Like the the drums are there, and you can tell the guy is beating the ever living dog shit out of those drums. But they sit far enough back in the mix in conjunction with those reverb drenched vocals and it's just like you can kind of hear and, the, the clattering of uh like the cymbals but yeah. like you kind of lose the snare like at least the bass drum has got some punch to it but yeah like these these vocals are so out front and so distant plus where the guitars are too like the two kind of blend and the bass is there i think i think it's kind of, again, kind of washed out. But this starts off kind of like just a, a crust punk album. And like going through this, this almost feels like it's paying homage to like some of the earliest extreme metal out there. Like going as far back as like Hellhammer. Like not even to the point where they get to like Possessed and Death Yet or like, you know, second wave black metal. Like this is very much along the lines of Hellhammer, Bathory's first album, and uh... God, man, like, I can't even think of anything else as raw. Like, maybe, like, just more, like, crust punk bands, like Discharge. It's very raw, very feral, and it's not about musicality as much as it's about energy. Energy is the thing. And atmosphere. And atmosphere is the other huge thing. Not a lot of riffs that stand out. There's a little bit in Brine Pool Aberration. There's a little bit in Black Smoke. Actually, Black Smoke actually has some riffs. Uh, yeah. Sabbathy riffs. Kind of doomy and ugly. Yeah, kind of doomy and ugly, but that's pretty much it for riffs. This album has like some interesting habits of like opening up very strong in terms of songs and then kind of going to the kind of crust punk kind of black metal well a lot. Mm -hmm. Good example, the song Trenches. Really interesting opening riff. Like I think it's just mm -hmm. a very clever constructed riff. And you know, a lot of these riffs kind of like you know, like just big down picked fucking like kind of punky riffs yeah. or black metal tremolos. But this one kind of stands out as almost like a Melvin's ish style riff, and it kind of leads in the song really cool. And then it goes inevitably into D beats, 
like occasional blast beats, but the D beat is kind of the thing that carries it. And that is definitely a, like you know, kind of one of the things in here that I noticed, like just the opening up really strong thing, like Pompeii Worm opens up really strong, like a really awesome nasty riff. And then at least it kind of breaks out of the D beat crust punk, like it goes a little bit more straightforward black metal, like more blast beats, the vocals stay in the higher register, you don't get as many of the deep growls on it. But this kind of just went to the well and I love what this band does as far as atmosphere, because this album yeah. is steeped in it. Even outside of the music, songs like Hadal, Raptures of the Deep, and Abyss of Brotula are more so almost homage to like gothic horror movies. Yeah. Very creepy synths and piano and just kind of a dripping dark atmosphere. And like they do a really good job at that. Like pure Fabio Frizzi worship. Mm -hmm. Like, you know. You, I actually was thinking about all the Fulci movies. I fucking love when I was heard that. I was like, dude, this is creepy. You also have like excerpts of someone with a German accent. Like I immediately went to Werner Herzog because that's the first German accent I could think of outside of like maybe like Till Lindman from <laughs> Ramstein. But it, it's just, I don't know. Like it, It's very creepy. It's very unsettling. But that comes with the issue of, like, as creepy and unsettling as the atmosphere is, the music itself is just kind of raw, straightforward, kind of punk. Like, it mm -hmm. really screams more punk than anything else, just in terms of, like, how minimalistic it is. Like, the riffs are never, like, super intricate. They're more about being primal and heavy and sort of, like, dizzying in terms of, like, how, you know, just like an atonal and kind of messy, but like messy in kind of a yeah. good way. Like messy, like a tangent almost. Yeah. And I guess that's not necessarily a bad thing, but they're not the, the prime focus on any song. And again, they kind of get buried by this, again, really good vocal performance, but very loud in the mix vocal mm -hmm. performance. Like when those high shrieks come in, they are fucking huge sounding. Like they sound like they've recorded it in like eight different subway tunnels. <laughs> like she's been at the bottom of the well the entire time, just screaming her guts out. Like just drop a fucking bucket, assholes, or like screaming about Satan or something. I don't know. Put the dog in the basket. She might want a dog. I don't know. And as raw and caustic as it is, unfortunately, like some of this isn't very memorable. And there are points in here where it's, it's sort of like just a head scratching moment mm -hmm. in terms of like production choices or just kind of why it's on here. Like Abyss of Brotula uh, starts off actually with some of the best synths in the album. Yep. I think that synth yep. melody is absolutely fantastic. It's creepy, it's unsettling. It feels like something's creeping up on you in the shadows. Mm -hmm. And then it just goes dead air for a while. 15 seconds, 15 full seconds of dead air. And you're like, what the fuck? And then it comes back in with this really creepy gothic kind of like whimsical choir thing. I didn't know you could travel to hell via carousel. I didn't either. But you can, and it continuously keeps slowing down as you descend deeper. I mean, it's creepy, it's unsettling, but I kind of wonder why is there that pause there? And this is the last track. The last track that kind of closes it. Right. It's an odd outro. But there's also uh, Chimera Monstrosa, which I don't quite get uh, what the the thing is here opens up with again creepy kind of gothic you know uh, piano pianos it's almost like a gothic waltz it's it's kind of interesting but then you hear this muffled music in the background which is completely drowned out by said gothic piano you can't really make out anything like I, I know maybe it's like some sort of artistic choice to muffle the music or something like that like I don't know what the idea behind it was but in terms of being appealing to the ear like, it was just like, man, this just sounds like they kind of screwed up the levels here. It's like, uh, fuck it, put it out. Well, and, and furthermore, that leads me to my next point. You've got four tracks of either synths or just instrumental, and, and they're, they're so short. Everything, what, the longest song on this record is, what, three minutes and ten seconds? Three minutes and 49 seconds. Three minutes and 49 seconds. And then you've got four songs out of 13 that are just synths, and you're like, what? Yeah. And there's like, you know, some shorter tracks in here where they start off really well and you feel like they could go on a little bit, but they kind of just stop. Like Loki's Castle it starts off with bluster. Like it's very fucking explosive right out of the gate. And then it, it just kind of ends. It's like it's a little bit over a minute long and it feels like it could have been longer and it actually 
was slightly different than a lot of the material in here. Like when it came down to songs that really stuck with me, it was probably Eutrophication, which was, you know, the most dynamic one. And honestly, the opening on it was a clever thing that I think could have worked yeah. a little bit more in terms of like other songs here. They build it up with synths and then the music comes up behind it. Yeah. And the synths fade in the background. Synths fade just... in the background and you end up with this doomy Sabbath -y riff and you're like, all right. Dude. And then it goes back to the well. But the well at that point, I think was a little bit fresh because they would switch it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that Doomy riff would return. There were some cool moments. I, I that liked song. that song. I think that song was really well written and it felt like kind of a combination of everything they were doing and just, you know, they were doing it better and the fact that the songs weren't so one note because, mm -hmm. again, a lot of D-beat, a lot of two-step stuff on here. You know, I like raw and primal music, but in terms of variety and in terms of the pacing of this album, it was kind of hard to get into. Like, mm -hmm. this feels like a compilation of demoed material. And, you know, some of the riffs might have been slightly half-baked, like some of the ideas might needed more time to sort of flourish. Atmosphere is on point, like they don't need to mess with that at all, but the music itself, they showcase moments where it's like, wow, all right, that's really fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. And then a good chunk of it's like, man, that's, you know, uh, it, it sounds like they captured a raw live show, and raw live shows might be where they really thrive, but on an album, I don't know, it just didn't stick with me very much. I think there's a small handful of maybe memorable moments or things that stuck out, but like overall... You get a, a couple songs and they're very short and then you get synths and then you get a couple songs and they're very short and then synths and like don't get me wrong punky d beats cool but don't let that be your only claim to fame on a record yeah i mean like bands like midnight thrive on fucking you know d beats and shit like that but they also have good riffs and hooks that stand Correct. out and this is again i think more about the atmosphere the vibe the attitude than it is so much about like you know musicality and writing hooks. Mm -hmm. This almost feels like it's just like, no, fuck hooks, I just want to creep people out and get people to punch each other in the pit. And I'm pretty sure you can achieve both on here. Sure, that's fair. I think in principle, I, I probably should have liked this a little bit more than I did. I think maybe it has more to do with like, again, the pacing, maybe some of the production choices on here, because I like the energy, I like the vibe. Like, filthy crust punk and fucking black metal go together really well. I mean, it's two separate crowds of people that don't like authority or deodorant. I'm all for it. This feels like, in principle, it should have like kind of captured that part of me that loves shit like Nunslaughter as well, but it kind of missed the mark for me. You know, I think there's potential here. I would definitely check out another release by him, but overall, I'm going to give this two and a half stars. Kind of just didn't quite do it for me. I still think it's okay. Like, you know, this is still the halfway point in our scorecard. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's definitely some stuff in here I like. It's just, it feels really uneven. It's kind of jumbled, like the pacing of it's very odd. And, you know, I feel like the atmospheric elements has really showcased a lot more dynamics in terms of like clever songwriting than it was on the actual music. Like I like, again, the raw visceral nature of the music, but that isn't enough to really hook me in. Like, I need some, like, cool riffy hooks that stand out. And a lot of this, you know, it was kind of going back to the well. And granted, it's a nice well full of violence and evil. <laughs> but, um, you know, it just really didn't stick with me. I still urge you to check it out for yourself. Form your own opinions. Don't just trust me. That's ridiculous. I don't even trust me. It's a I, horrible idea. I, I wouldn't do it. Fuck no. But, yeah, give this one a whirl. For me, it's a two. There are things on here I like. Don't let me tell you that the record sucked because I don't think that was the case either. It just didn't really grab me and there's not a whole lot to latch on to besides creepy horror synths. I fully support evil dark music all day long. Lord knows I love evil ambient dissonance. Great. But I mean the, the lack of, of riffs and again the way the album was paced. There was like a lot of build up that never really led to anything substantial. Like, each one of these songs had potential at some point. They just always dipped back to a well. And D-beats are cool, but I need I need something to latch onto. I need something to really grab me. And having one or two Sabbathy riffs and parts isn't enough for me to really say, yeah, this is great. I'm curious to see what, where this band goes. And I'll, too, give it another day in court because I, I think there's something in here. I think there's... 
there's definite potential here. I just don't think they've met that mark yet. Two for me, much like Nick said, don't listen to my opinion. Formulate your own. Please go out and buy this and listen to it and form your own opinions. And maybe you're going to like it. And that's fucking awesome. We support that too. It just wasn't for me. So, yeah. So, if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. And if you were new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all, all the, the time. time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link down below there to thrallsmetal.com. That is where our store is, but also our Patreon link. We do need to load up on more shirts. We will eventually get down to that. And any news about uh, the thing going on in the place called Denver? Actually, if all goes according to plan, the next wave of bands will have come out today. Probably by the time you see this video is also the time the announcement for the next wave of bands come out. So... Uh, by my count, that will be 10 bands. We have 20 more left to go. Yeah, things are moving in 100% the right direction with Denver Death Fest. I'm very stoked for what's happening. Again, 20 more bands to come. It's going to be a real good time. Make sure you get out there and check it out. DenverDeathFest.com I think, once again, the three-day passes are only 60 bucks. Uh, $20 for a day, $30 for two days, and 60 for all three. Pretty good fucking deal, considering... Each day will contain 10 bands and sponsors and beer. I think they're having a Death Fest beer brewed, and I know they're getting a dispensary to sponsor. So, yeah, I mean, it's 420 in Denver. What the fuck else are you going to do? I'm excited. It's going to be a good time. One of those bands will definitely be Air Supply, too. Like, that's a headliner one night. That's what they told me. It's, it's Air Supply covering Air Supply. <laughs> Isn't that just Air Supply? It's Air Supply squared. That sounds like it's lame squared. Anyway, thank you all so much for liking, subscribing, following. It's absolutely amazing to see this fucking channel grow. I know I fucking ramble on about the thank you part at the end of the video, but <laughs> I fucking mean it. Like, I feel compelled to do it because it's just amazing to fucking do this and have the community that we have and have the YouTube metal community too. Like, the whole thing. Like, it's, it's fucking it's, awesome. It's crazy to see... How it's gone from a little small channel with a couple dudes talking about metal albums to being engaged pretty much on a daily basis. I'm just in places I never thought I would be. My basement? This is... No, I knew I was going to be in your basement. I lived here. Yeah. I've been in this basement more times than I care to comment on. But uh, no, it's been really great to watch this channel grow and to be a part of something that's become really big. And I'm very excited about that. And completely and utterly thankful for it. This has become such a big part of my life. I know it's the, a huge part of this guy's life and really all of us. We enjoy doing this and we're going to keep doing it and we couldn't actually really do it as well as we do it without you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. We really, really appreciate it. We are very grateful for this. So, so before I gush so much I have to change pants, I'm just <laughs> going to thank you one more time. You all roll and we will catch you later.